Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, all, and welcome. This is from the World TDA Coffee with Legends. This is an initiative led by the City of Atlanta, Mayor's Office of International Affairs. My name is Lucas Martins, and I am your host here today. And this is a, a wonderful opportunity to talk to Atlanta's international figures, and they're going to talk for a while about their experiences here in the city and their memories from the capital of the state of Georgia. And guys, when I said that I would do my best to bring amazing guests, I was telling the truth because today I'm going to read her bio just to make sure that I'm not going to mess it up. She is an Emmy Award winning journalist and sports anchor for CNN and Espanol since 2011. She was born and raised, actually she was born in Cuba and raised in Venezuela. And she is fluent in Spanish, English, and Italian. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth Perez. Thank you so much. Grazie mille. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So let me start in a different way today, Elizabeth, because I'm really curious about your, your background, because nowadays you are a journalist, you have been interviewing people from all over the world. But uh, when we look to your resume, we're going to see that you got a, a, a BA in systems engineering, and now you became a journalist. So uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> It was a little deviation on the way to becoming a journalist. Well, actually, what happened was that back in the day when I was living in Venezuela, I've been living in America for 20 years. The only university closer to my city uh, that uh, had journalism was in Caracas, and it was like two hours away from my city. Um, my parents were very worried because I'm only child from their marriage, so they didn't wanted me to go to Caracas. So basically they told me, choose whatever career you can find here in Maracay that you might like and, uh, and that's it. So at the time I was kind of, I was very good at math. So it was not hard for me to get into engineering, but I worked for like a year and I didn't like it because I always had in my mind that I wanted, I'm very curious, I love to read. So the best career I think for somebody who likes to be learning every day, it's journalism. So at some point when I graduated, uh, I had the opportunity to come to America. My father, even though he didn't let me go to Caracas, but not didn't let me, but he suggested me not to go. He was very open for me to go to Boston. So I went to, uh, to Boston University for one year and that's how everything started. Over there, I realized that I could do a master's degree and that I could work as a journalist. So for me, it was like, a, I don't want to say uh, a dream that I had because it was like more like a goal. Like I wanted to do something to see if I could work in the media. And that's why I always thought I'm going to live in Miami. So after I graduated um, in the university, I started doing like internships and things. And I started working in Miami and I never left, which is I mean, I left to Atlanta later, but like at the beginning, I stay here, which many of my colleagues didn't do. They left to Chicago, they left to uh, San Antonio, to a smaller market because it was easier to find your break, you, to start working as a journalist. But I always had the idea that Miami had the networks and I had to stay here until CNN came along. So in 2011, we got CNN in your life, so they... They hired you and uh, they said, Elizabeth, you're coming to Atlanta. How was your reaction to that? <laughs> well, we were, we were talking since the year prior, since 2010. Um, the person that was in charge of the department, he uh, contacted me because we had a friend in common, a cameraman that used to work for CNN as a freelancer. So they were trying to do like a revamp of the station and they created this morning show called Cafe CNN and they wanted the person to do a sports in the morning. And for some reason, they wanted a woman. So he was like basically searching uh, a sports anchor, woman a sports anchor. And uh, I was one of the, uh, of the people that could be, you know, like uh, considerate for the position. So we were talking, nothing happened at the end of 2010. 2011 came and in January, I flew to Atlanta 
to, it was like the biggest snow. I don't know if you remember. Um, I don't know if you were living in Atlanta at that time, but it was all the, the airport was closed for several days. People, my colleagues that were living before there in Atlanta had to walk uh, to CNN because all the, the streets were closed. So I went there, I think a weekend, a week after, and I did my, my, my test on camera and the offer was mine when I left uh, Atlanta. So I had to think about it because uh, as I was telling you before we started this conversation, um, I was kind of like thinking that Miami was like the city that I was going to live forever. So, and I, at the time I just, bought an apartment i was like settling in and then this offer came so i couldn't say no and i left and uh, i remember when we were uh talking about doing this interview and i mentioned that uh, you know you, you you should bring your atlanta memories to the show and you are you know so excited about it why why is atlanta so special for you well, this is funny because when I was thinking, okay, uh, what do I know? I have a lot of things from Atlanta actually here to show you, but there is one trip that I did with my parents. Um, I used to like take them on vacation. My parents are, are elderly. So once a year or once every two years, because for many years I was living by myself in America and they moved to Miami, I think eight years ago. But when they were coming to visit me, I would say, guys, let's meet in Chicago. Guys, let's go to, I don't know, Savannah, Georgia. So I remember in one of the trips we stopped in an airport, we stopped in, in Atlanta, in, uh, in the airport. And we had to, I think we had lunch or something. And I started reading, this is the place where Martin Luther King was born. And I was like, oh my God, we need to come here for vacation. So that was in my head. And when I moved to Atlanta, I ended up living very close to the house where he was born and where he is buried with the wife, with Coretta. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of things. I have this book that probably you have seen it. Absolutely. which we have it in the CNN store. Um, I used to go to the restaurant that he had and I used to see that the booth, uh, Montana, in uh, downtown. Um, it, at the time I moved there, I started dating the, the person that now became my husband. And he had this, I don't know, fixation with pandas, but he has never seen one. So I took him to, um, let me see if I find Is he here. from Atlanta? No, he's from Italy. Okay. And uh, that's the reason I speak Italian. Yeah, so I would ask you One that. of the, he went many times to, to Atlanta to visit me, but here, I don't know if you can see here, this is the panda from the Atlanta Zoo, which is the oldest in America. And he was there standing for 20 minutes crying when he saw the panda. Like he was <laughs> so moved. Here's in the, in the memorial of Martin Luther King, the house. So it was so beautiful. I mean, his reaction. And of course, one of the gifts that I bought oh. from the uh, Sioux store and also this. But this is actually, I, the artist is from your country, Brito, from Brazil. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah had it in the store and of the Zoo. He's, a, he's nice. a big name in Miami. I know it. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's a, um, a very known artist and he does. We have a couple of. Uh, yeah. little pieces here in the house are very beautiful very happy colorful so tell me I, i'm really curious now that you mentioned your husband and uh, you know you mentioned that you you were able to meet him in atlanta georgia so uh, no. uh oh no, it we was met not in, in miami atlanta. in miami no, then. we met in miami but then i moved to atlanta and we were friends uh right. and when i was living there probably six months after he I came to Miami back to work. I had to do some interviews. So I remember sending him a message like, look, I'm in Miami. And he says, oh my God, let me take you dinner. So after that, I told him I'm in Atlanta. And he says, oh, I would love to visit you one day. And after right. I think two months, he went to visit me and we started the relationship. But the relationship started in Atlanta. Oh, fant okay, now, now I got your point. So. Uh, regarding your, uh, you know, your childhood, you were born in Cuba and raised in Venezuela. So, have you ever imagined that you would have a, a career abroad? Because nowadays you speak uh, three languages, right? So, have you ever imagined that one day you would be able to work for so many years in the United States and you would be able to speak three languages? Well, 
three languages, but two kind of like, mm. <laughs> um, actually, no. I mean, I knew that at some point in my life, I wanted to live abroad. Like when I was in my city in Venezuela, Maracay, because I, I went to Venezuela when I was a baby. So I don't remember anything from Cuba. I've seen pictures, but I don't have a memory. Um, and I knew that eventually I, ha I would love to live abroad because I think education was the best excuse to live. And then uh, finding a job and becoming independent allowed, allowed me to, to stay in America. But I always think that maybe I wanted to have done like one year abroad in Europe because I think it's it's amazing. I mean, you can do you can visit so many places, but I never did. So, so for those who are interested about having a career abroad, maybe if they are uh, Latinos or from Asia or from from Europe, they they want to have a career abroad in a different country with uh, a different language. Uh, what would you recommend? Well, first of all, decide what it's the thing that you like the most. And in my case was journalism. And I found a niche in sports that I really appreciate because not so many women um, like sports, for example, or they, they venture, maybe they like it, but then they, they specialize in something else. Everybody wants to do breaking news or politics or economics. Sports is fun, but not all women like it. So... I will say, think about what is the thing that you like and if you can find an opportunity in order to be uh, indispensable in a job or be relevant for an industry so you can have an edge, uh, a competitive edge in order to be hired. And regarding the universities, in my case, I did um, English in Boston University and then I got a scholarship at FIU. Florida International University. So that was a great help. And there are a lot of um, opportunities for people, I mean, that they sometimes don't realize because people don't look. So if you start like clicking, investigating in Google, you might find a lot of things that you might be able to apply and maybe you get them and it's a lot of help. And for those who like to learn uh, a foreign language, uh, you know, in order to be, uh, To, to succeed in, in the United States or in Japan, you must speak Japanese or English, in Brazil, Portuguese. So for those who like to learn a new language, uh, would you have some, some tips for, for these people like me, for example? Well, you speak perfect English. Um, well, I think television, that's my dog that is barking. He's in the office with me. I thought he was going to be quiet. Okay. He's not. One okay. commercial break. He is super sweet. Uh, he's an Italian greyhound and he's blind. So he loves to be with me. We have three dogs. And right. one we got her last year. One is uh, Malshi. Uh, she's uh, 13 years old. Um, Palino, which is the blind dog. He is seven. And we have another one, Lila, another Italian greyhound. She's eight. But uh, going back to your question, I think television is amazing. I mean, I remember myself being in Venezuela and watching Seinfeld Friends because I wanted to, and, and, and it was a great because they used to leave the, uh, the original voices, not like in Europe, like I've noticed because we watch a lot of uh, Italian TV. They translate everything into the language. In Venezuela, back in the day, it was the original uh, voice of the actors with subtitles. So that helps a lot. Um, also talking, I think uh, not being ashamed, uh, being like me right now, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> Even though English is not my first language, but you, need, you know, you have to, to start somewhere. Absolutely, absolutely. So let me ask you one more question about uh, your connection with the city of Atlanta, because you have been working for CNN E for more than a decade, right? 11 years, is that correct? Um, I started in March 2011, so it will be 10 years and a little bit more. Uh, CNN is deeply connected to the city, you know, uh, the company is headquartered in the city of Atlanta, so uh, how it feels like to work in a company so deeply connected to our city? It was great, uh, I mean, the uh, I think the environment of CNN um, and CNN, I'm talking about CNN Domestic, Espanol, International, CNN Radio, also Tech Wood, which is part of CNN. 
um, now Warner Media. I mean, it's amazing. I think the city of Atlanta has a lot to offer to professionals that are moving to the city. And it's not only journalists or people that work in media, also people that work in Delta Airlines or Coca-Cola. So one of the things that I really appreciated when I, when I first moved was the amazing restaurants that the city has. I mean, almost every day, because I don't cook, I was trying a new restaurant and, uh, and of course I have my favorites. Uh, I remember that when I wanted to eat Mexican, I was driving to Chatacuchi in Nuevo Laredo Cantina, which is a very small place, but it's amazing. Um, there was another place called Carpe Diem in uh, Decatur, I believe. Um, Carpe Diem, and they have another one. I don't remember the area, but it was close to Virginia Highlands, Barcelona in Virginia Highlands. So I haven't been in, a, in many years. I left in 2000, at the end of 2013, and I haven't been back. So probably there are newer restaurants, but those are the ones that I remember. And one time we got lucky and we had a reservation um, on Bacchanalia, in the Stars Provision. I don't know if you have tried, it's amazing. I mean- Yeah, it is. One of the best I places I've ever been. I can tell, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Elizabeth, as we are getting prepared to, unfortunately, to finish our conversation about the city of Atlanta, I, I have a, a special challenge for you because uh, the question is, let's, let's pretend that the city of Atlanta is a person. So what would you have to say to the city? What kind of message you would like to, to send, you know, regarding you know, all the experiences you had, all memories, what would you have to say to the city of Atlanta? Well, Atlanta, you are a welcoming city. I really appreciate your warmth, the, uh, the joy that you have, all the places that you have been able to, to cultivate because it's a great city, I think, for business, for restaurants, for sightseeing. And uh, I hope uh, a lot of people have the chance to, to enjoy it. Fantastic, fantastic. Just one more thing I would add to our conversation. Uh, usually I ask our guests to, to send a message for, for those who are watching us, which, uh, you know, which Spanish is their first language because it is your first language. So yeah. they would like to hear from you. You know, they, they have been listening to you every single day on CNN and you are speaking Spanish there. So would you have a, a special message for, for those who are watching us whose first language is Spanish? In Spanish, para, of course. Para todas esas personas que están viendo esta entrevista y que no han tenido quizás la oportunidad de visitar Atlanta, tuve el, el, el chance de vivir en esa ciudad fantástica por casi tres años cuando comencé mi aventura en CNN en español y recomiendo totalmente que la visiten. No solamente van a encontrar historia eh, con el, la casa donde nació Martin Luther King, eh, donde está enterrado, sino que van a conocer también parte de lo que es la industria de Estados Unidos. Hay grandes compañías, el zoológico es una belleza, es el más antiguo de Estados Unidos. Así que recomiendo que si no tienen un destino dentro de Estados Unidos planificado para visitar, pongan Atlanta en la lista porque no los va a defraudar. Y sobre todo la industria gastronómica. Hay restaurantes para escoger, o sea, cualquier tipo de comida que quieran probar, Allí la van a encontrar. Wow, that, that's fantastic. I, 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 I confess <laughs> that I understood a little bit because my first language is Portuguese, but could you summarize a little bit what you just said in English? Well, I was saying that if somebody wants to travel to Atlanta or is thinking about where to go in America, that Atlanta should be on that list because it has a lot to offer. Not only history, not only beautiful places to visit, but also a lot of restaurants to choose from. I think it's a beautiful place. Um, I remember that also, because my parents were many times to visit me, I took my mom to the house, I think it's in Marietta, of uh, Gone with the Wind, of the writer. And I mean, oh. she was like in love, fascinated, because that movie, I mean, she grew up, even though the movie was in 1939, I think the year she was born, she saw it in Cuba. So for her to see the, the, the pictures of the Tara plantation, even though it's also, it's, everything is fictional, but it was beautiful because she was like, oh my God, this is part of, the, uh, of my childhood. So yeah, it was nice. Um, the aquarium was beautiful, Coca-Cola. I mean, it's, uh, it's an exciting experience to see what are the flavors of the world. 
Amazing. Elizabeth, thank you for coming to the show. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me, Lucas. This has been great to talk to you. My pleasure.